Right, this is a uh, video especially for Daniel at uh, Pit Stop in uh, Dunedin. I'm Dave, uh, you would have been speaking with me, um, I would have been your technician that uh, would have been handling your, your, um, your job. So, um, your job 4399 um, for your Holden ECU um, that was sent in. Uh, 17th of January. Right, so this uh, style of construction is basically a, a wire bond construction. A, a single die of an IC has been um, used. Uh, this style of construction is actually used on a, a, a multitude of systems. Take a look over my bench. We have a another uh, ECU from Nastra. Um, basically what, what happens with these um, particular Astra ECUs is actually the, um, the uh, cap that goes on onto it is made out of metal and when you um, remove it, uh, it destroys it. So we especially get in uh, CNC laser cut um, acrylic sheets to, to re-glue back on. Uh, this is out of a, an Astra again. So it's the same construction. This is out of a, a Bosch ABS controller. Easy valve. Some of it's there at the bottom. This one here um, suffered from a a, uh, a ground failure. So we have a another ground coming off and being um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, drilled and tapped, uh, just a stainless steel screw. Uh, unfortunately because this lost its ground it tried to find another ground somewhere else and destroyed the uh, control electronics and that's why we have it still here in the workshop. So it's the same construction as um, uh, your ECU for your Commodore. That's quite um, obviously dirty with the, the um, Shavings from there. Hang on a minute, we've got a call coming in. Dave here, uh, GHT fix. Hey, very well. Debra. Oh, yes, those ones. The Yes, uh, your daughter called earlier. Yes. That, that's okay. Thank you for your call, though. I'll update you as well. Um, unfortunately, your PCB board. Um, this is the one that no power up, no heating. Um, so we're trying to work our hardest to try to revive them. Um, I'm sorry it's been a little long for that. Um, so we should have actually updated you in a status for that. Um, but nevertheless, um, we're trying to get them to repair for you. Okay, probably looking about an extra maybe three days or so. Um, and I um, see there's a note here to carry them back to you as well. Understand. No, that's that's excellent. Thanks, Deborah, for your call. Uh, last three digits, uh, three nine three. Yeah, excellent. Um, excellent. Thank, thank you for, for your call. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. -bye. Even though it's five fifty-seven, uh, we'll still answer our phones. Right. Um, so where was I? Yeah. This. Um, the, the the construction of these are quite beautiful. Unfortunately, the, um, the longevity of the, the units um, aren't the greatest uh, due to the wide bond construction. They're quite um, heavy mass ones, so when the, they actually move independently from the main um, connector block, but that's okay. So it's a very common fault that we see here in the workshop. There's one that we haven't decapped yet. It's out of a holder vector or something like that. It's actually a, a one for um, a training on anyway, so uh, not really going to take that one apart. So we have another staff member that needs to be trained on those units. And of course, um, this is a CVT transmission uh, ECU for an Audi A4 to A6. Um, it's currently got uh, isopropyl alcohol in there to, to um, remove the tra automatic transmission fluid from inside before we uh, recap that one on. 
So that uh, was a successful repair. Uh, those typically have a, a range sensor fault, um, but nevertheless, that guy just saved two and a half thousand dollars for a new one. So, and the repair only cost him three hundred and fifty, including GST. Moving on to your one. So your one here doesn't have any wire bond failures apart from uh, a little bit of damage it occurred that uh, when we removed your top off. Um, so that's okay, that's already been repaired just in case there's anything else that we could see. So if we have a, a closer look at the construction of your ECU, I'll try to get this as close as possible without losing focus. It's probably about there. Um, so I'll grab some um, test, test uh, probes for your multimeter. I'll grab some alligator clips to um, attach some smaller probes onto so we can actually probe this thing. So um, uh, I'll just get this arrangement set up. Okay, okay. Let's get a little bit more finer control on our on our probing here. Right, so as we see in the very corner here, we have our grounds. So that's a uh, system ground. Also power ground as well for driving um, small peripherals. Make sure we've got a contact. Good. So here we have. Uh, so what I mean by bypass capacitors is that you can have uh, it's to filter out. Um, uh, sporadic noise and other shit on a, on the line, especially a digital input um, or output pin for that matter. And they're usually spread across all our electronics, um, whether it's uh, on a ceramic substrate like this construction or not. Um, just uh, grab a, a random board, I guess, and this is out of a, a, um, a truck tr tracking unit with uh, cellular. Uh, we see here we've got a lot of bypass caps around that's for power management and power filtering. Um, yeah, more substantial ones are actually for you holding your charge and yeah, the smaller ones are, are typically for uh, removing noise off the line. We've got a, an ABS controller here. That's uh, out of a, a master something, no idea, but uh, this one here, the, um, the guy decided to, to spray in some sort of cleaner and it's fucked up, but anyways, um, this one here it has your typical bypass caps all over, plastered all over it as well. So going back to your one, we've got the same, same matter, even though it's on a different uh, sort of construction. So on one side we'll have a ground, so Ground, 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 ground. So they're all connected to ground on one side, and then the other side will be a digital I/O. So uh, you wouldn't see the other side um, being connected to ground. So if we have a look on power supply side, so that's that's ground on that side, and on the other side will be the voltage rail, and there's no beep, so that would be a um, a good sign. Unfortunately, we have here. Uh, I've, I've lifted the goop, um, and here, here's two capacitors that are actually shorted out on both sides, and they appear to be some sort of data line. Um, it looks like a, by, um, a twisted pair sort of uh, configuration of the CAN bus line or whatever. Um, so there's not much actually we can really do with that one. Might actually just have a quick squiz under the microscope and see if I can actually disconnect one side of the um, uh, one side of the capacitor and make sure there is actually no short on the other side. Can't actually remove these caps very easily, unfortunately. Without force, you're not at these these boards are simply not designed to to be repaired at all. Um, so 
normally if you wanted to replace an IC you would just desolder it and chuck in a new one like a, a MOSFET or whatever but this here is just, just nuts, you can't actually get in there and, and change, uh, change them. The, the one exception of that obviously is a, a MOSFET um, where you know that where the gate and drain and source is and, and you know roughly what the part number is and that's typically on the diesel pump. Um, uh, diesel pumps, ECUs uh, that you find everywhere um, your, your V-dubs and, and your um, four transits. So I've actually disconnected a, the um, capacitor there by force. Um, just there we go. We've successfully removed that capacitor without damaging the board. You can't just desolder these. These are um, non-solderable item. So we'll just. Uh, how, how they work these is that each layer consists of a um, um, call it silver paste and they just build up the layers from that point. I'll just go into there again with the microscope because you can't actually see what you're doing without um, freehandedly so I'll just check and the short's still there. Okay, so it wasn't a bypass cap problem. The only problem is it will most likely be an IC that's shorted in that case. Could probably feed lots of current into it to, to see what goes pop, but that's not really constructive in the repair of this unit um, since we, we won't be able to change the IC. Let's turn off the continuity there. So yes, uh, unfortunately that won't be a, um, a valid repair uh, for you, which is a bit of a shame, but um, we always like to have things repaired, so basically now our only option is to, to reseal this back up for you. Um, move my probes. And I uh, get it back to unscrew the uh, filler. Fill this up with um, the same colour uh, silicon. Of course, um, automotive electronics is it's quite difficult to to bench test any of this stuff. Um, but if you have, say, a, a wire bond off, um, you'll definitely know uh, what's up with it. Um, even a short on something like this would, would have been quite hard to um, diagnose, but I uh, was just a by chance um, I saw that. Let's, um, the humidic seal again. Just uh, clean off the edges here. Explain obviously why everything just lost um, lost communication when you um, plug this unit in. If there was a direct short across the, the data line, um, you would expect it to, to do something nasty. So that's obviously what it's done. Ready hope, which is a bit unfortunate for your customer though, because you can't really do much about it. Beautiful again. Yeah. 
nice. But anyways, thank you very much uh, Daniel for sending in this unit for our um, inspection. It's much appreciated that uh, you did send it in. But um, yes, apologies that we couldn't uh, actually help you with it. Thank you very much.